Yo, Adam Saxon here with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup, and I've got some awesome things for you. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit subscribe to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dive in. All right, Chris Webb's got an awesome blog post about creating spark lines inside of your tables or matrix. This is all possible because now you can set data categories on measures. And what he's doing is calling the Google image charts APIs. And because it's a measure, we can add that inside of a table or a matrix. And this is in line with our data. And so now you get these cool charts that just show up from calling this API. So this could be spark lines, it could be a bar chart, it could be anything that the Google image charts API supports. This will allow you to take your reports to the next level and we like that at Guy in a Cube. So if this is something you're curious about, check the link down below, it's pretty sweet. Jason Cantrell over at Blue Granite's got a blog post talking about simple linear regression. And what I love about this blog post is he uses a, an example that I think we can all relate to about you know, is my increase in eating out correlated to my increase in spending? Spoilers, it probably is. But we want to use some data, right? And that's what Jason does. And he does it to explain simple linear regressions. And then from there, he goes on to use quick measures to create some coefficient calculations that will help him as well. The other thing I love about this blog post is at the end, he kind of brings it all together and says, not just I'm budgeting for simple things like this, but you can use this in your business as well when it comes to marketing and sales and profit losses and things of that nature. If this interests you and what you're doing in your business, be sure to check out the links as always down in the description below and links for bonus items as well, along with all the other items that are talked about in this roundup. Go check it out. We've got some PowerShell love for you. Kai Uncroft, who's the PM in charge of these PowerShell commandlets, has a blog post talking, just walking through all the things with these new PowerShell commandlets for Power BI. I did a video on this not too long ago. You can check out the link up above. This is a great overview if you're not familiar with it, if you haven't used it, if you wanna maybe just look and see, hey, is this something I could take advantage of with my tenant? This is really good stuff, especially if you're an admin for your tenant, but anybody can use this. It's not just admins. All right, so check out the link down below and also be sure to install the PowerShell commandlets on your machine and give it a whirl. If you're using Power BI Report Server, be sure to update to the August 2018 version. That's right, a new version was released for Power BI Report Server. The last version that was released was back in March 2018. And with this, we bring Power BI Desktop release in sync with Power BI Report Server with the August 2018 build. So one thing to realize with Power BI Report Server is that preview features are not available inside of Power BI Report Server. So if there's a preview feature, I'll give you a good example. Report page tooltips is a preview item inside of Power BI Desktop that is not available with Power BI Report Server. However, one thing that just went GA is report theming. So now that is available inside of Power BI Report Server. Pretty cool. Buttons are also available to trigger actions and there's a slew of other items that are all items that we're familiar with on the Power BI desktop side. If you've been using that with the service, those are all in line now inside of Power BI report server. So you can publish that, check it out, make sure you download both the Power BI report server and the updated Power BI desktop file that goes with this release of Power BI report server and you will be good to go. Kai Uncross got another blog post for you as well. This one, I think a lot of people are gonna like. There has been updates to the way you can do URL filtering inside of Power BI. So this is the URL filtering we can pass in. It used to be fairly restrictive. One example is for field names or table names, we couldn't include spaces in those names. One of the updates that's in this release is now that we can use ASCII characters inside of the formatting for that field name or the table name. And Kai's got some examples in the blog post and also the documentation has been updated to include these examples as well. We've got a slew of operators we can use inside of the expressions that are all compliant with OData. Greater than, less than, equals, not equals, all of those are available now, as well as improvements to crafting that URL inside of DAX itself. So a lot of great stuff in this. Links down below if you wanna check it out. 
I'll also have a link to the documentation as well, which has more in depth of what's available and what's not. My favorite item this week has got to be the URL filtering update. I know a lot of people have been wanting more functionality out of that. It has come. It is exciting. I love it. But I want to pass this off to you. What was your favorite item this week? Go ahead and leave that down in the comments below and let me know. Or if you had an item that I didn't talk about and you want to share out. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome. And we'll see you in the next video.